black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what up? Happy New Year's Eve. Also, probably Happy New Year as well, just because I'm probably going to be deathly hungover because I'm getting it started with y'all. I'm going to kick this off with a drink that is made up to Canada, I do believe. It's called a Caesar. It's kind of like a Bloody Mary, so Americans might kind of know what it's like. That being said, ours is much different and much tastier, and if you don't like that, come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, both are good in their own right, but I do prefer the Caesar, quite honestly. Um, so we're going to kick it off with a little drink ski, and then also some weird shit happened the other day uh, when I was coming home um, involving a girl in a suicide attempt uh, at my building, and what was crazy about it is just like, the thoughts that I was having prior to finding out about it or something, like, the thoughts that I was having prior to finding out about it and just like how it related to the scenario, like it just all kind of lined up, it was really strange, but anyways, um, so let's make this drink and then I have some sour cream and some chips and we're going to get into those, just snack a bit, yak a bit and just kick back a bit, you know what I mean? Like, let's just chill, hang out, you grab a drink, grab some chips or whatever the fuck you want to eat, I don't know, uh, and kick it with me, let's chill. All right, I gotta get the chips out of the way because this drink requires a bunch of shit. So, okay, first things first, you need to have the glass. N Luckily, I'm organized, I got it all ready here for you. Next, some ice, but, pro tip, because your vodka or whatever alcohol is at room temp, really, you should keep your vodka cold, I'm just being an amateur, but you should, however, Pour the vodka first, that way you can see how much you got. For me, that's a nice, I don't know, two and a half ounces probably. But you want this for this cocktail, because honestly, uh, in the Caesar, there's so many ingredients that it's going to mask the flavor of the vodka quite a bit. But, so you put your ice in first, the vodka melts down the ice, right? So once you got your ice in, you're going to want to get... Worcestershire sauce, whatever, however you say it, because there is no right way. Worcestershire sauce. That's what I call it. And you're going to want to go a couple hefty dabs of that. Okay. She's getting all brown. Next, you're going to want to go in with either, you could do pickle juice. But I do the pepperoncini juice, because you guys know I love my pepperoncini juice. I go in with probably, well, what's left in this jar? Like an ounce, maybe. Ounce of brine. That's a little spice, a little pickling, vinegary, ting. And then, horseradish. Put a little... A little bit of that in there. And I would normally have some lemon, but I don't right now, but I would usually put a squeeze of lemon. It's nice to have a little citrus. And then of course, Clamato, which is clam and tomato juice. I know this sounds disgusting. In theory, this drink is disgusting. In theory. Well, let me get my little stabby stab, pick my pickle. Okay, there's a nice one there. We don't want to put it in whole, we're going to want to slice her. I put it in like quarters, so I just quarter it and I just slide the quarters in. So it gives you a nice little snack for later on in the pickle. If you want to get all schmancy about it, you can do this as a garnish. And that's a Caesar though I did screw one thing up. I forgot to put the rimmer on. So the rimmer is just like celery salt and other sort of flavorful bits and normally you would have wet the glass and put it on the lip like so. I just fucked up so I'll just sprinkle some into it. Still get that flavor on the top. There she blows. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Caesar. One thing left to do, always make sure you give your drinks, cocktails, whatever it is, you gotta give it a little stir. We're not trying to uh, 
have this taste uneven after all that effort, you know what I mean? So, that's it for me. Cheers. Just the best. This is one of those drinks where you either really like it or you really hate it. Oh yeah, but it's so good. Ah, the ba I can't, I don't know how to describe it. Give me one sec, I gotta taste it again. Mm. This is the type of drink that you have the next day. That's what we do in Canada. We have them the next day after a hard night of getting faded with a crew you wake up feeling like shit you need some grease Little hair of the dog. That's when you get on the group text. You send to the group text, you say, Brent? And the crew's hurting too, and they go, Brent? You got all debate about where you're gonna hit for brunch. Do we go with the classic old spot, the, the standard, try something new? Sure enough, you make a decision about where you're going to brunch. You guys link up, maybe take an Uber together, maybe meet there, who knows? You get to brunch. You're sitting in the chair. A little bit of a headache. A little bit of anxiety. You know, what do you need to feel better? Hair of the dog. What is hair of the dog, you ask? Hair of the dog is more alcohol. See, a hangover is just your body saying, you give me all that alcohol, where's my alcohol? I hate you. Because I need more of that. So the best way to ride through that is to get another few ounces of alcohol in you so your body's not in that state of withdrawal. So in Canada, it's usually one of two things, a mimosa or a Caesar. And a Caesar, that's one of those drinks where you have one or two, two tops though. It's like a meal in itself. Salty, it's thick, it's rich, tasty, it's got treats inside, it's got a whole snack in it, you know? So you crush one, you breeze through a seas, and while you're doing that, you decide. Are you getting the waffles or the eggs menu? I tell the server, eggs menu. Because I myself don't like sweet breakfast foods. But maybe you do. Maybe you get the waffles. That's all on you. That's completely up to you. To each their own. 
and this thing we call life. Now, by the time you put your order in, the Caesar's gone. You're probably gonna have to get one more. And by the time you dummy two of these boys, you're looking at about five ounces of alcohol back in your system. You're riding a nice buzz. You no longer feel like shit. And you're a happy camper. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the history, story, purpose, and reason for a Caesar. You hear me? I'd be intrigued to hear what your hair the dog is. Wherever you're at. you the story of what happened to me the other night. Not to me, but at my building sort of thing. Mm, these chips are so good. Also, by the way, I don't know, I don't say it, but these are sweet southern barbecue. Miss Vicky's, they're new, they're awesome. Any sweet barbecue chips with sour cream, always so good. So the other night I'm at work, Friday night. I generally work till 2.33 a.m. I'm a night shift guy. And, you know, though I like cooking, I'm into cooking, and I'm into all that stuff. You know, I don't have a glamorous job where I make a ton of money and all this stuff, right? But I gotta work, I gotta make a living. Can't be a bum. Especially if I'm gonna have an internet connection and a camera and computers and shit to fucking do try to achieve my dreams, which I'm always working on outside of work, i.e. this channel and also trying my best to, to get music stuff going, but you know, it's difficult with limited resources and you know, hard to get exposure and all that stuff. So. For anybody who's riding with me on that shit, thank you so much. I got stuff coming down the pipe in the future. Anyways, most of the time when I'm at work, while I'm doing some task of, you know, prepping this food or whatever, like doing all this, like cutting or whatever it is, it's a kind of mindless labor that you have to do. It's with anything though, like when I'm cooking at home, you still have to do that mindless labor to get the end result. So that's fine. And if I'm being honest, there's something to be said about trying to find the beauty in that monotony of like the skill of like cutting perfectly and things like that. There is something Zen about it that you learn to love. But for the most part, I'm pretty much zoned out in my head, plotting and scheming coming up with ideas you know I'm thinking about music videos I'm, I'm, I'm imagining myself 
we're doing all these things, these, all these things that I want to do with food and, but like my own thing, my video production and all these ideas, music and all the dreams that I have, right? So I'm like daydreaming at work, you know, kind of doing some shitty task or whatever, or some uninteresting task, let's call it. And during those times, I spend a lot of time ruminating like that, right? And frustrated by what I want to happen, what I'm trying to make happen, but having like certain barriers in a way, like I, you know, I don't have access to this, or I don't have this much money, or I don't have that equipment, or I don't have necessarily the freedom or the space to do what I want to do all of the time, things like that. So, so many thoughts, drives, ambitions, goals, lots of like little roadblocks in, the, in life, right? And I'm trying so hard like to remain patient, remain applying the pressure and not get too frustrated and just slowly but surely chip away at each roadblock till there are at least limited or you know, little ones left or whatever, right? Because I don't think you'll ever not have roadblocks in life. There always will be. Get done work. Kind of tired, but I'm in my feelings. Like I'm in my, I'm just in my state of, I exist in this state a lot. And maybe you guys, well, you guys don't know it because you're not me, but, and I don't express it too much on here. On here, I like to just try to bring a good positive vibe. I don't want to like come off as like a, depressed, complainy type person, because that's not what I'm trying to be. I'm frustrated, right? It's a difference. Because I know my potential, and I want to execute on it, but like I said, we're Roblox. So, coming home from work, feeling some type of way. I'm in the cab, I'm leaning back, I'm like, ugh, life, right? Fuck. Stressful. So, I get out of the cab, I'm walking into my condo building, and I'm having these thoughts about just, you know what, I, just this weird thought dawned on me in this moment. I wonder how many other people, like I, when you live in a condo or an apartment, you f tend to forget that, you know, two feet beyond this wall is another human being's whole entire life, right? Unfolding beside you, but you don't know anything of it. And that continues throughout the whole building. Like think of my, let's say my condo has a thousand people in it, right? I tend to forget that I'm existing amongst a thousand people, right? You just think of your little solo unit as your individual self. And I had this thought that was like, I wonder how many other people are in their units right now having a difficult time with life. like facing some sort of adversity or roadblock or whatever or frustration or you know how many other people are just like next door to me or above me or below me and if you could see through the the wall if you could see the, through the floor if you could see through the ceiling who would be you know on, broken down in a panic attack or who could be laying in bed and hasn't got out of bed for four five six days because they're just so depressed and defeated. Uh, who is elated? Who's happy as fuck? Who just got a promotion? Who just found out that their mom has cancer? You know what I mean? Like, there's just so many factors, and everybody's having their own ex experience. And it was so crazy because I was literally thinking this walking into my building, and I don't know why, but it clicked that dawned in my head, and I was like, you know, there's probably other people laying awake at night with their stresses and they're, they, you know, they all want things for themselves and as most people do. So that was my mentality. I'm walking in the building, outside of my building, there's four cop cars. Never been a cop car outside my building ever, not once. I'm like, that's strange, but whatever. Something always went. It was Friday night, and you know what? To be honest, my my condo's a bit of, has a bit of a frat house vibe. Let's say we have a lot of young young people living here that like to turn up, 
and they all work that Monday to Friday, nine to five grind, and they get litty on the weekends, like for sure. Like it, it gets wild around here. So, anyways, walking up, coming to McConnell, blah, blah, blah. get in, roommate goes, a girl just tried to jump off our building, just tried to kill herself. She was just like, there's a whole scene. She's just on the edge, screaming. It was insane. It was nuts. I'm like, what? That is fucked. A, because it's just fucked, but B, because I was walking in my building, literally having these thoughts of like, I wonder who else around here is like stressed and frustrated and like, like, you know, at their, at the end of their rope, at their wits end, like not having it anymore. And, uh, so my roommate said that, and then we have this, uh, group for our building on Facebook. And you can post like anything you want in it, right? Hey, this, hey, that, parking spot, you know, selling a TV or whatever, you know, just anything, just general updates. And there's a thread about this suicide attempt thing happening. And one dude got a video of it happening from his balcony. So I'll play that now. It's going to happen on your screen. It's not crazy graphic or anything, but you know, it's still it. You can still see it if you're intrigued. You know, these types of things interest people. But uh, I'm going to watch it on my phone and you'll be seeing it here at the same time. So there she is. She yells, I'm going to kill myself. She's on that corner. She's on this corner of this building. And there's all these people running over to her aid. So far we've got about 10. And so that's a grocery store there. So that's about three stories. So here's the thing. I don't know that she would have actually died. She probably would have just really like, you know, quadriplegic shit, really, really hurt herself. Probably busted like her bones. You know what? If she fell in the right way with her head back or she did like a head dive, for sure you would die 100%. You'd smoke your head, you'd be done. But as you can see, there's about, you know, 10, 12 people. And this girl starts yelling, Why are you doing that? Which I don't think is a smart thing to yell at somebody doing that. I really don't. And then this goes on for another. 20, 15 seconds before the video cuts off. So she's on the edge freaking out, da 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 Now, story has a happy ending. Excuse me. Someone who was able to rush up, get in, because that was off of like our main party room or whatever. Someone was able to rush up, grab her, get her, pull her in. She's fine, right? She lives. Police report, everything. Nine one one. Da da da. So few lives we find, but it was so strange to me that when I was, I was having one of those nights, like, you know, not to end my shit, but just like a frustrated. Like I know what that feels like, right? I don't know what's going through her head, but. I think everybody goes through things like that and it's weird it's just weird that I had that thought and then I walked in to find out that that like sort of thing happened like that energy was in that air in the air and that's what's weird is like I don't want to get too like hippy dippy about it but like I'm back to like the whole thing about the people living around you is like I often forget that I'm this close to so much other energy 
Well, maybe, I don't know how that energy could affect you or not, maybe whatever, but I do believe in energy, so. It was just crazy to me that that had occurred and I was on like that wavelength in terms of my thoughts, in terms of like, I wonder who else is kind of suffering, right? And when I say suffering, for me, it's, I'm a, I suffer because I want things for myself. I, I have dreams and goals and, you know, I'm, it's almost, it's a, having the dreams is, is great and good and all, but at the same time, it's torturous. Like to have a dream, to, to know that you have worth or potential that you could maximize and, and, uh, the word I hate when this happens to me uh, realize that potential right like you can bring it to fruition there it is fruition manifest that and actually become it like to be tortured by those things is is not fun like <laughs> I don't know what her stress was probably different I'm sure but for me I know what it's like to be just like uh, like why like why is this not happening for me or like what do I do different or like like is it just a magic you know is it random is it just like do you and that's the thing that comes back to like with like YouTube and shit and I never want to come from a complainer's angle I want to come from a grinder's angle but it does bother me when you see people who do an eighth of the effort that you put in on something or, you know, are less talented or they're just more ba like, I don't know, like some people go hard in the paint and like actually have true potential and true, true talent and like do put extra effort into their shit and try to make everything really nice and good. And then somehow like aren't rewarded accordingly as per the idea that hard work gets success. And I just don't know that if that's true, I do believe that the more shots you take and the more quality those shots are, the better chance that you have of success, yes. But it's just, there's a point of frustration that comes when you see other people somehow getting like these like huge rewards for something that's like not really that great. like. So, and I see it in YouTube all the time and it's in life everywhere as well. And, uh, yeah, it's just like a frustrating thing. So, you know, I don't want to go too deep into that. Cause I don't, like I said, I never want to sound like a complainer because people get what they get off what they do off their own accord and everybody deserves what they, if they're grinding, then they deserve what they get for sure. hundred percent. But, uh, it just seems like sometimes and this is what's frustrating about life. Like, is it preordained? Does the universe favor things or is it just random roll of the dice luck? Like, what is it? Like, what is that factor, that X factor of like, who gets what and how and when and why? So, this is very tangential, this video, but Essentially, really what I want to say is like, I'm always going to continue to strive, push and grow and learn and try to be better and try to perfect crafts and put out things. And because for me, when I'm in that state of like, you know, frustrated or, you know, fuck it all kind of thing, like what helps me, what gets me through even if it doesn't pay, right? Like for me to do my truth, for me to do the things that I love to do that invigorate my soul, make music, make videos, cook, cook for my own right though, my own self, create. Those are things that like heal me that you can't take away from me. And I don't need money or da, da 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 It would be nice to be recognized though 
for them accordingly. That is the one thing that fucks with you when you do create. I will say that. But I feel thus far on my journey with this, I have to say that I'm blessed. I have, you know, it could be worse. I have a great fan base, great subscriber base. So far, you know, it could be way bigger, but whatever. It is what it is for now. Who knows what it will be then in the future, but as long as you just keep doing the thing that you love to do, money or not, you know, success or not, if it makes you feel alive in those moments of doing it or makes you happy, then just do it, like, regardless, because there's no reason not to, especially if it's, like, kind of, like, free to you. Like, for me, making a song is not free, like, I had to get stuff, but, like, for the most part, like, I create the thing and then I make the thing it's not it's like we all have a not we all have a phone or we all have a computer or whatever but you know what I mean you know what I'm trying to say it's not expensive you know if your thing is you know jumping out of airplanes I'm sure that could get a bit pricey but I guess that's just what I want to say with like the end of this video like going into the new year You know, life gets stressful, life gets frustrating, life gets intense, life gets annoying, life gets overwhelming, all sorts of words for it. Um, that said, though, like, just find your little things of happiness. Like, I, like we all, some, most of us don't want to work a shitty job or whatever, whatever, but in your downtime, in your off time, Try to find those things that light you up. Try to find things that stare your demon in the face and say, fuck you, essentially, to that thing. And just knock it down, get rid of it. And a lot of times that demon is just the fear of, of the thing that you love anyways. Like, a lot of people say, like, oh, I want to start a channel, but I can never do it. Or I'd be weird in front of the camera. Or, like... A lot of times all it takes is just turning, literally sitting down, turning on the camera and just doing it and you'll no, you'll realize it's not crazy, it's not that bad. And then once you learn that, that fear doesn't exist anymore and now you've beat that demon, you've won, right? So, yeah, I guess that's what I want to lead with for going into the new year is essentially just embrace your truths, embrace your happinesses success or not, just as long as it brings you a joy in the moment, because all you ever really have is the moment, the past is fake, the future doesn't exist, every day you wake up and it's now, 20 years from now is, will always be now, right, 20 years from now will always be now, 20 years from now you may have all the shit that you envision, and that's good, envisioning is good, manifestation is good, to, to think of things that you want, but you're only ever existing now, acting in the now, and then the now will come 20 years later and you'll have a mansion and shit because you place the steps every day. If that's what you want, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to hut on the beach and do nothing. That's fine too. What I'm saying is everything else is, is not real other than right the fuck now. It's the only thing that exists. So if, if you could do something for the in the now that makes you happy, and feel good and true to yourself, then do that shit. And uh, just know that, you know, there's a lot of people that are frustrated and feeling some type of way about this life, this existence, you know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. And I think most people keep this shit locked up and hidden and deep inside because it's not socially acceptable, but that's whack and it should be socially acceptable to tell people how you're frustrated with life and why and you know what it is that you want to achieve and what it is that you could do better to get there or what it is that's gonna help light you up and make you feel like your life is 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 worth something or means something right so I could keep t going tangent to tangent to tangent on this but I won't I'm going to end this here in saying that I hope everybody goes into the new year positive, focused, 
ready to face demons, ready to embrace happiness and truth, and just let menial shit slide off your back and just be present in the moment. Okay? So until the next one, you guys know what you have to do. You have to eat good. You got to live well. And most importantly, you have to stay true. Because otherwise, when you're living a lie, that's when it gets real painful. All right. Peace.